Hello everyone, welcome to Old School Chemistry. Today we're going to do a little bit more challenging Alex topic. It is called identifying rigid parts of an acyclic organic molecule. Now I have some hacks for you. I have some tricks that are really going to help you. I know that this topic can be confusing for students. First, big, big takeaways, okay? Understanding chemistry. Single bonds rotate. Uh, you're going to have the atom uh, bonded, single bonded to another atom, and that single bond will rotate, okay? Double bonds are fixed. So let's say I have two atoms double bonded, it's fixed. Those are not going to move, okay? So we have that in our mind. Now the hacks for you, here it is. Number one, if you have two atoms that are attached to the same atom, they're going to be fixed in distance fixed in distance. Let me give you an example of that. Let's see, for example, right here, those two uh, atoms are attached to the same atom, so they're going to be fixed in distance uh, because this spinning is going to be, pretend like an axis, or an axle spinning right here. It's spinning, that carbon's just going to be spinning like a little lollipop in space. Uh, but the, di and the same thing here, this, is going to spin, that oxygen is still going to um, be um, the same distance from that oxygen and that carbon. So I tell my students, if you have two atoms bonded to the same atom, they will always be a fixed distance from each other. They might be spinning in space like this, but they'll always be the same distance from each other. Second hack for you, if you have two atoms, and here's how I say it, bonded through a double bond, that is also fixed. Let me give you an example. Uh, so right here, you can see this double bond, carbon, carbon, and then those two oxygens. Because this is fixed, those oxygens will be a fixed distance from each other. Those will be a fixed distance. So those are the two anchors that you need. Anything else you're going to say, those move, those move. Now, some people are really, really good with space, spatial relations that they can picture the atoms moving and others that's abstract for them, which tends to be more me, by the way. Um, okay, so we're going to find the distance, the atoms that they've marked A through G, which ones move a distance from one another, okay? And we're going to use the hacks and then I'll also explain it spatially. So I'm looking at A, those are going to move a distance. Uh, two things, they're not bonded to the same atom and they're not bonded through directly a double bond. You would have to have a double bond right there. Um, now these, so those single bonds are going to spin. As those spin, all, that whole thing is going to move. The hydrogens will move away from each other. Uh, so A, I'll make a note here, A is going to move and that's what we want. The question here, uh, it wants to know, in fact, let me scroll down so you can see it. Um, it says, oh, let's see here, list all the distances that can change. So we're listing all the distances that can change. So A is going to change distance. B, no, because those two atoms are bonded through a double bond. They're bonded through a double bond. So B, fixed. Uh, C, C is also fixed those two atoms are bonded through a double bond. So they're going to be fixed in distance. Now D, D, you can backtrack those, that nitrogen and nitrogen backtracks all the way to this, that single bond and that single bond will rotate. Those are not directly bonded through a double bond. So D, that will change distance. Those nitrogens are going to move a distance from each other. Same thing with E, those hydrogens, they're not bonded to the same atom and they're not bonded directly through a double bond. So those are also going to move a distance. And then let's look at F, fixed, because oxygen and carbon are bonded to the same carbon. Same thing on G, the oxygen and the carbon are bonded to the same carbon. So those are going to be a fixed distance. So our answer on this would be the A, D, and E. Let's do another one, more practice. And, okay, let's look at this one together. We'll start with our A. So you look at this, think about this for a second. You've got your hydrogen and oxygen directly bonded to carbon. That's fixed because they're directly bonded to the same atom, it's fixed. B, I have oxygen and oxygen. Those are bonded through a double bond. So that is going to be fixed. Let's go to C. 
hydrogen and oxygen are bonded to the same atom, that's fixed. We don't have anything yet that moves. Let's look at D. Ooh, okay, check out D. Carbon and oxygen. Those are not bonded through a double bond right here. This bond is going to rotate all of that, and that bond's also, you have two degrees of freedom on this, of where this is going to rotate and rotate. So the oxygen carbon distance definitely changes. They're not bonded to the same atom, and they're not bonded directly through a double bond. Now, if I had a double bond right here, yeah, that would have been fixed, but we don't. So D is going to change distance. Uh, and then let's look at E. Oh yeah, look how different those are. Oxygen and oxygen, they're not bonded to the same atom, and they're not directly bonded, th or bonded through a double bond. We have a lot of rotations, so those are going to definitely change distance. So I do, do D comma E. All right, so those two hacks, they will save you time. When you first look at this, I know it seems overwhelming, but if you keep in mind, two atoms bonded to the same atom fixed, and two atoms bonded through a double bond, those are also fixed. Everything else, you're going to find that it will rotate away, that they will move a distance. Okay, good job. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe. Thank you for being here and have a wonderful day. Bye.